How do you find your way back in the dark? How can a film that ends like this? Just head for that big star straight on. The highway's under it. It'll take us right home. Be one of the saddest films ever made. Well, let's get into that. The tragedy of the misfits is one that's well known from the four doomed main characters that occupy the screenplay to the desperate and hopeless reason for its writing to the agonizing production and finally to the mournful swan song it soon became. The Misfits is a 1961 film starring Marilyn Monroe, Clark Gable, and Montgomery Cliff. Directed by John Huston and written by playwright, then husband of Marilyn Monroe, Arthur Miller. The story follows a young divorcee who falls in with an aging cowboy, a former World War II ace pilot, and a bronc rider, all of which fall in love with her for different reasons. From Gay's hope to undo a life of mistakes and neglect, to Guido's longing to fill the void of his dead wife, to Purse's desire for nurturing and mothering that he'd always lacked. They hatch a plan to round up wild mustangs, something they used to do in the past, although, due to changing times and declining population, the only likely use for the horses is to be sold to a dog food manufacturer. Rosalind reluctantly joins the trio on the job, but they only find and catch one stallion and four mares. Rosalind discovers the horse's potential fate and has a breakdown, screaming at the three of them across the desert, condemning him for the world they still reside in. She begs Gay to release the horses, and as he's considering it and the implications it's had on his life, she offers him $200, which sets him off. He single-handedly wrangles the stallion to the ground just to cut it loose on his own terms. All three male characters embody the desperation that comes with loss. Gay is steadfast in his stubbornness of his own flaws and the wake that his failures have left him in, Estranged from his children, all but alone and nearly broke from his refusal to work for wages. Guido is perhaps the most pathetic, yet audacious character. Where Gay's motives may be selfish without realization, Guido's manipulative and insidious in his attempt to get Rosalind. Purse is different altogether, though. He's sad and lost, yet there's always a twinge of hope in his eyes for a better life. Self-exiled into loneliness and addiction, he's searching for somebody to take care of him due to his inability to do so. Rosalind, on the other hand, is a disruptor of their world, a beautiful Trojan horse that penetrates and permeates their every conviction and shows them fully the folly of their ways. Her kindness and innocent belief in them reminds them of the failures they are as men, while sparking the desire to become the men she sees them as. The Misfits was written as something of a valentine to Monroe after she had miscarried her and Miller's child. He hoped to repair and rekindle their failing marriage and perhaps save Marilyn from the end she was rapidly approaching. Rosalind is the encapsulation of all of Marilyn's hopefulness, beauty, and innocence, but feeling exposed, Monroe openly hated the script, the characterization of Rosalind, and most of all, her performance in the film. The script also echoes the tumult of their marriage as Miller was increasingly becoming disenchanted with her neediness and insecurities. Miller's underlying fears are also apparent upon viewing, as the characters are all jockeying for Rosalind's attention and affection, only to be distressed when she shows the faintest interest in anyone else as Miller clearly must have felt towards other men's desires of Monroe. In the end, Rosalind doesn't choose the character closer to Miller, Guido, but Gay, the rugged, manly character that more resembled her prior husband, Joe DiMaggio. The marriage completely fell apart during filming and ended very shortly after. The production would prove to be a disaster as well. Miller was able to pull in famous director John Huston, who gave Monroe her first role in Asphalt Jungle to helm the picture, but... He would often be drunk on set, passing out between takes, or simply late because he was out the night before gambling in Reno. The debts he accrued were left to the studio to settle. Montgomery Cliff was cast to play Purse, but he had already begun his self-destructive spiral. His renowned good looks had been disfigured after he'd driven his car into a telephone pole. He was also constantly drunk or drugged on the set, prompting Monroe to tell him, you're the only person I know who's in even worse shape than I am. And Meryl Monroe, whom Miller wrote the movie for in an attempt to help her rise out of her depression and addictions, was nearly always hours later, even AWOL from set. As her marriage collapsed around her, she was increasing her prescription drug and alcohol consumption, and at one point, director John Huston had to shut down production for two weeks in August of 1960 to send her to a detox center. The one beacon of light on set was Clark Gable, who Monroe was convinced was her father in her youth, even sleeping with a photo of him under her pillow. He took all the chaos of the production in stride and was an outright gentleman about the whole ordeal. When Monroe would fail to appear at press events for the movie, he would show up with a smile on her behalf. 
He demanded to do his own stunts in the 108 degree heat of the northern Nevada desert, being drugged 400 feet at 30 miles an hour across a dry lake bed. Perhaps it was the physically demanding strain of the production or the stress of waiting around professionally on a haphazard set, but two days after the last day of filming, Clark Gable suffered a heart attack. He would die 10 days later. Monroe would soon follow him in 1962 after an alleged drug overdose. Whether that was the cause or not, it was clear on set that her physical and mental health were diminishing rapidly. In 1966, The Misfits was playing on television. The Montgomery Cliff secretary asked him if he would like to watch it. He responded, absolutely not. These were his final words. He would suffer a heart attack only hours later. The film was released on Gable's would-be 60th birthday, and though The Misfits was the most expensive black and white movie up to that time, it was a commercial failure. It was Monroe and Gable's finest on-screen performances, and it would also be their last. Never have there been three roles that three actors were so perfectly suited for. From Cliff's destructive and helpless purse, to Marilyn's sad and gentle Rosalind, to Gable's rugged and lost in the modern world gay. Just like the wild Mustangs they were trying to round up, they were the last of their kind. They were all outcasts or misfits due to their individuality in an increasingly homogenized world of consumer culture. A world that's completely overcome our day-to-day -day life. Perhaps this shot is meant to be a hopeful ushering in of a new era, but it's, it's truly not. Rosalind has fallen back into the cycle that got her to Reno in the first place, and Gay has to try to find his way to exist in a realm that he's never understood. The closing shot of The Misfits is just a sad ending point to a world that never rose out of the entropy of its creation and drug so many others down with it. I want to thank everybody for watching if you made it all the way to the end here. The Misfits is one of my favorite movies of all time for reasons I couldn't even fathom going into in this short little YouTube video. Please feel free to like, subscribe, hit the bell in the corner for notifications, and hopefully I'll be coming back at you with something, something new soon. Thank you.